Oh yeah, are you ready for the ultimate data strategy guide? Well, you're in luck. Today on Kratos BI, the Fabric Luchador is here in dark mode, bringing all the glorious power of combining Databricks data with Microsoft Fabric into one ecosystem that can destroy all of the others. <laughs> All right, I can't wait to show you how this works. Okay, so make sure you like, subscribe. If you want early access to this content, become a member for as little as five freaking dollars. You can get early access to all this content. What are we talking about here? The ultimate data strategy where we combine data bricks and fabric. Why the heck is this important? What's the problem? What are we trying to solve? Well. Here's the biggest issue. We have data teams that are often out fighting business teams when it comes to serving data in our organizations. Why, why is this going on? Well, our data teams, they've got all sorts of real concerns here. What happened to my middle thing there? Son of a nutcracker. Ah, okay. Um, they are terribly concerned about uptime, reliability of their data, right? Like they, they get calls in the middle of the night that they're just, they just go nuts trying to deal with. It's a huge problem. They've got access and security issues. They've got people talking about performance that they've got to address. And then they've got the actual scalability of the solution, right? They've got this huge enterprise that they've got to think about. These are this and many, many more things are on the minds of the data team with how they get this uh, up and going. Oh, <laughs> technical debt. That's what's missing. Oh, you even forget about it. It's so easy to forget about. It's technical debt that's supposed to be right there. Technical debt. All right. Now, this is the big concerns that data teams are working with that they, they have to address. Well, on the other side, we're talking about the business teams. They've got to, they're concerned about their time to market, how how flexible they can be, how quickly they can put these things in place, what the, what control they can have over these solutions as they define and tr try different things out and expose this information. Uh, they're worried about their user experience and what's the actual cost that's going to impact them, right? Like these are big things that the business team is concerned with, right? Now, what's the solution, right? Because it's not one, and it, it, you know, it's not all one. It's not all the other. It's got to be something where both of them can work together. And this is where we talk about an environment and a data strategy that drives enablement. And we're, we're, I'm going to use this. We're going to be talking about the pyramid of enablement, where we've got enterprise content, departmental content, content that goes to the team, and content that goes to the individual. All right. Now, oopsie, no, let me switch over here. Oops, that's the wrong one. I didn't want to be on that one. Here, here, here. Okay, when we talk about governance, because governance is really key when we're working inside of our, our environment, we've, we've got like high control that's going to be a place around anything that 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 enterprise level and as we go down the stack as we go to department or team or individual we're going to be lowering the degree of control that we put on this environment right because we, we you know everything that's that's up in the enterprise has to be highly curated highly available like it's got to be supported all that good stuff stuff that goes on with the individual we want them to we want people and teams and departments to be able to explore and find insights on their data because they're the ones who, who are going to be actively intimately working with their their information working with the business they know what's going on so we want to enable this through this strategy okay now when we get into this we are talking about pro code tooling existing way up at the top there and then low code capabilities for everything else, right? IT and those enterprise data teams, they've got to get that content up and it's available. And they've got all sorts of controls that they got to get in place around that. When it comes outside of the uh, departmental team, and honestly, like, let's actually just kind of uh, zoom in on this. I want to like actually sh showcase this. There is some work that a departmental team might be doing. It's not a lot. It might not be a lot that falls into that enterprise grade solution, right? The rest, you know, and we'll, they'll go pro code. They'll do it the whole way. The rest of it and everything below that is going to be in our low code solutions. Okay. Let's keep going. 
No. How do we do this? Well, we go with the pro code offerings up in Databricks that's built and managed and maintained by the enterprise with a handful of items that may or may not be uh, created by that, that department in the Databricks space. It may mostly be in the fabric space, right? So when we talk about tooling, we're going to be going enterprise for Databricks because Let's face it, a lot of them have been using Databricks for five plus years. They're they're intimately familiar with it. They love it. They're not going to give up their Databricks for Fabric. But Fabric comes into play and is exceedingly useful for people in the business who are just getting used or who are just happy to, to play with these tools and want to experiment with things, want to try things out without having to move things all out of IT. That's one of the other big things that this enables. And let me show you how and where. Okay, when we talk about the architecture, we're we're not going to we're not going to vary from what we've done before. This is no, especially at the data layer. We're still going to maintain our bronze layer for data that we've landed into the ecosystem, silver layer for like the transform business logic that uh, and, and rules get applied in the silver layer, and then the gold layer is going to be your dimensionally modeled star schema uh, content. Okay, now when we get onto this. Your enterprise team is going to be maintaining and managing all of this. You know, the enterprise content is going to be existing throughout all, throughout all of these layers. But as we go on through the gloriousness and wonderfulness of mirroring Unity Catalog, we can, in one link, mirror that information and make it available in the bronze and silver and gold layers uh, in via you know one link in fabric for users to be able to access, consume, and do all sorts of different things on it. Okay. Now, when we get into it, how are you actually going to make this happen? Like, okay, hey, great, we agree this is something that should happen, but how? We're going to actually get to it in a second here. All right. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go into uh, into Microsoft, or I'm sorry, into fabric. Blah, not into those, into Databricks. You're going to make sure that you've defined your catalog in Databricks where all of your content exists. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to define that uh, Unity catalog mirror, okay? So you're going to define that mirror. And then the absolute last thing you're going to do is you're going to go in and define that those shortcuts that are linked out to other people, okay? Now, this exciting? You like it? Yeah, all right, but let's get in and let's actually show that demo that we've got available, all right? Now, here is the 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 guide and the link to all the information that you need in order to make this happen. That's going to be down in the, in the in the comments down below. Uh the first thing you know, there, it talks about what analytics experiences are built in. It talks about the metadata sync, how this functions, how this works. And it even will like run you through like a tutorial on like how you can set this stuff up and how you can create that mirror and get it up and going. But we're actually going to do this today. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to make sure I've got my Databricks all configured up in uh, Azure and I'm going to go in and you can actually see it here. I've got my, oops, I have got my, come on now, you're, you're mucking with me. All right, I've got my catalog set up, and I can see my bronze information is available in here. All of my tables are available in bronze. I am, I'm basically, I'm ready to go, okay? So I'm going to exit out of here. So once I've got this set up, this is the easy part, because most of the time your organization's been doing this for five plus years, you've got this available for you, okay? Now, here's where the tricky part is. I'm going to go into Fabric to establish this mirror. This mirror is going to be in an enterprise space that we're going to actually create a workspace for, okay? So we're going to create a brand new workspace. We're going to call this one Databricks Mirror. Enterprise mirror. I'm going to make sure that it's part of a fabric capacity. I'm going to click on apply. Okay. Once that's created and established, I'm going to go up to new item. And for this, all I have to do is type in data bricks, mirror Azure data bricks catalog right here. You can kind of see it. I'll, let me zoom in on this one. All right. I'm going to select this item. 
And we're go we're going to be creating our mirror inside of here, okay? So it's going to uh, define it. I'm going to say create a, a new connection. And I'm going to look for my... Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So I got to go up to uh, create new connection, connection name, uh, AdventureWorks. Data bricks. All right. Great new connection name. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I need the URL. I need the uh, ADB workspace ID and, and data bricks ID. So I go up here and I go to my URL and it's gonna be it's gonna be just this to the dot net. It's not gonna be any of this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna grab this dot net URL from the workspace, copy. Paste. All right. And I'm going to say connect. And then I'm going to say next because we're going to go on to choose what data is now available in here. I'm going to choose the catalog that I'm in. This happens to be in the Kraus BI UC data catalog. I'm going to select this. Now I could select all these things. I've actually encountered challenges when I select all the items. It gives me some weird errors. So, or it just, it, it works odd. I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to select all of the items in here. Ba, 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 and click on next. It's going to create what my artifact name is. I can choose to define a sensitivity level. If I've enabled sensitivity levels, I haven't done that. So can't for now. I'm going to create this. Now, what I'm going to see is this is actually going to create that mirror and then bring all those items in. So what am I going to get when I get a mirror? I'm going to get my mirror. I'm going to get my SQL endpoint and I'm going to get my uh, semantic model because that's what always comes with our information. So if I go back into my enterprise data, you can actually see that that is what is created, right? Here's my mirrored data bricks. Here's a semantic model that gets created automatically, and here's the SQL analytics endpoint. So if I go back to the mirror, I can scroll in and I can see the bronze data, and I can select the item that I'm uh, mirrored in. And you're gonna see that it takes a little bit of time the, the first time that, that you pull this stuff together. But this is gonna make this available inside this enterprise space. Now. Something I want to do, I'm going to go back actually here while that's actually pulling up. I want to go into settings. And this is a big deal, right? So in my endorsements of this data, this is the data that I want everyone to be using for any of the analytics or anything that's going on in the ecosystem. So I'm going to define this as master data that everyone in Fabric should be using this. Now we might allow some people to have certified or promoted items off of this that drive off of this, but this is the master data that will get applied. Note, when I define it, you'll see that your name and who did that gets attached to that master data certification, okay? I'm gonna close that. We'll go back into my SQL endpoint. And now I can see that I've got access to my data here. This is fantastic. Okay, so everything that was in uh, Databricks and actually still is in Databricks, no data has moved whatsoever here. We've just created a cache that's now accessible through one link. Okay, we're not actually moving the data, right? At least not, uh, and you know, beyond what the service supports, the service does some caching stuff and whatnot. But that's you're not moving or having to maintain these. Okay. So we've got the enterprise data out, that's out there. The third step though, is what would what those other teams, those departments, those teams, or even an individual would do when, when going in to actually create and access this stuff. So I'm gonna replicate uh, a, a department team, uh, Mirror Lakehouse. So we can actually, I'll show you how this is gonna work. So we'll hit apply, we'll create this workspace. And from here, I'm gonna actually create my first lake house. 
All right, so I'm going to choose a lake house. I'm going to call this my uh, uh, de department adventure works. Underscore adventure underscore works. We'll put in schema. I'm going to create this item that's out there. It's it's going to create my lake house just like this is a regular lake house, okay? I'm then going to go up and I'm going to actually click on um, a new table shortcut. And I'm going to go into my new table shortcut, choose Microsoft One Lake, and I'm going to look for my master data. Look at this. Here's my master data, and it's coming from Azure Databricks, okay? So I'm going to choose that as, as where my data is going to be coming from. I'm going to go in, and now I'm going to choose everything that I want to come through. Now, again... Well, I had issues at the sink when I chose the whole folder level. Uh, I think I'm going to guess that that's going to straighten itself out in the future. But just be aware that this is a thing that you have to be mindful of. Okay. I'm going to select all my items here. I'm going to click on next. <clears throat> it's going to ask me and prompt me for all these like syncing informations. Uh, I'm just going to, I could go in and edit and do different things here. I'm not for the sake of simplicity of this demo, uh, but you could do that. But now as a team or a department that's outside of enterprise, I have access in here to all of the tables that are in my master data database in my lake house. So I can, I can query these. I can actually build and extend upon these. So let's say I wanted to define some new business rules for how we handle a certain uh, customer definition or customer segmentation. I could do this as a business owner or as a team lead to define these things, test these things out, load these into my lake house, test out how this works. And like that testing, maybe that testing goes on for like six, seven, eight months, right? You make sure that your your logic works and holds. But I could do that all inside my own environment. And I've, I still have access to that exact same data that's defined in Databricks, made accessible in Fabric via the, the, the mirror, and then shortcutted into the workspace. Whoa. I mean, when I saw this, I was blown and i mean blown away at what this means for our data strategy our architecture and how we can really really solve that ultimate data strategy question all right if you found this useful if you liked how this can work and operate and what you can do with this uh, or if you have any questions, leave those questions down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Share this with your friends and family. Do all the YouTube stuff, right? And again, if you want early access to this breaking content, subscribe to this channel. As little as $5 a month, you can get early access to this stuff. It really helps. goes a long way. You have the best day ever. Peace. All right, and I get that this stuff's difficult and hard, and maybe you'd want help. Head over to bakertilly.com slash digital. Click on Get More Information. You'll fill out a form. Uh, this guy, Chris Wagner, he'll call you, or one of his colleagues will call you and give you a hand and help you get you set up and running, all right? Um, but if you think you can do it, and I think you're up for the challenge of becoming a data god or even a data luchador, watch this video or this one to learn more. Ha, 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 ha.